So let, let's uh, be more real and actually talk about a real interaction that takes place. I think we have some list of interactions that we can draw from. I think the easiest, easiest one is probably the Coulomb, Coulomb scattering. Do you guys remember Coulomb scattering? Yes? Somebody tell me what Coulomb scattering involves. Coulomb scattering, that's not right. Compton scattering. Compton scattering. Somebody tell me what Compton scattering involves. This one, by the way, well, will it be? I guess it's not main piece of exam three. Yeah, okay, it'll be on the final, but probably not exam three. <laughs> it, this is more special relative than quantum mechanics. What does Compton scattering involve? When a photon hits an electron and bounces off to different Yeah, way. a photon scatters from a charged particle. We, we can call it electron, let's say it's electron. So in a Compton scattering, this is kind of the reaction diagram you might draw. A photon comes in, collides with an electron, and then, well, actually, I guess nothing changes. Uh, you still have a photon that bounces off, and you have electron that also bounces off. So this is the kind of a reaction equation you might draw, which doesn't seem like a lot, but all right. So that's the Compton scattering equation and we can to give a more physical detail we can draw a Feynman diagram so let me just illustrate the process for drawing this Feynman diagram um, so you draw uh, um, process for well um, what you can check that whatever diagram it is you're drawing is correct you can look at your initial state and your final state do I have a photon and an electron coming in and do I have a photon and an electron going out? So, um, all right, so let me just draw the photon coming in and an electron coming in. And um, so this is the electron line. And at the end of the day, what we need to have is an, um, what we need to have is an electron going out and a photon going out. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to come up with an argument why we can't draw it this way. Because I guess the, if uh, all the information you have is just what I told you, the simplest thing to do is to be just to join them all together in one vertex, right? And um, that's not how Feynman diagram is drawn. Let's see, what can I, I don't think I can really bring in anything to say that um, this is wrong, uh, it is wrong. Um, but uh, what it is is the Feynman diagram, um, it's not just a drawing. It's not just a drawing like this. It's, a, it's like a free body diagram. There are rules you have to follow because what it is, it's an outline of a calculation you are going to do if you are actual particle physicist. Um, we are not gonna do the calculation part, but because the diagram is a way of organizing the calculation, there are rules you have to follow when you are drawing them. And it turns out this is also not one of the diagrams you can draw, even though that would satisfy all the conservation laws. So I guess I need to actually tell you the rule. <laughs> so I started by organizing stuff here. So, um, um, so there are certain ways you, uh, symbols you use to represent agreed upon things. So there's the photon lines, and there's, um, and how do you call it? I guess we call it fermion line. Oops, I meant to grab a black pen. Um, and there's, a, so fermion, you guys all remember what fermions are, right? Electron is an example of fermion, yes? So a fermion line looks like this. Fermion line looks like this. And what I need to introduce is the idea of primitive vertex. It's the basic building block of Feynman diagram. It's like the smallest Lego block. And whatever bigger Feynman diagrams you have, have to be built out of these Lego blocks. So the primitive vertex for QED or 
electrodynamics. Um, let me, since we don't, uh, QED is a new word. Let me just call it electromagnetism primitive vertex. It will always look like this. Any portion of the a Feynman diagram looks like this. You have a fermion line coming in, fermion line coming in into the vertex. You have a fermion line going out of the vertex. And that will actually end up conserving some quantity that we haven't talked about yet. And you have a photon line coming out of it. So actually, there's a kind of an intuitive sense you can make. So um, this is an intuitive sense that you can make. Imagine this is an electron or a charged particle. Um, suppose it's uh, going in some straight line, and then suddenly it accelerates and turns the direction. When you have a charged particle that accelerates, what else happens along with that acceleration? Electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation, you guys remember that? Accelerating charges emit <laughs> electromagnetic radiation. We kind of talked about that when we were doing stability of a hydrogen atom. So as this charged particle, oops, let me draw the light letter Q for the charged particle. As this charged particle accelerates, it emits electromagnetic radiation. So that's what this primitive vertex represents. So, um, so this one kind of looks similar to that, except you know it has two photon lines instead of two fermion lines. That's what was wrong with it. Um, so here, as we draw this diagram, we have to make sure that any single vertex you look at, it has two fermion lines attached to it and a photon line there. Because the, at the very basic interaction is when a charged particle accelerates, it's emitting a photon. Or you can look at it the other way. So a charged particle is going this way, but it accelerated because it was hit by a photon. It enters a photon, changes its momentum, and then goes in another direction. Um, so let me, I guess it's uh, kind of easier for you to see what the correctly drawn Feynman diagram looks like. So let me just draw it and see that it's uh, correctly drawn according to all these new rules I'm telling you. So this photon and this electron, they interact at a vertex. And while I'm tempted to draw an electron that just goes out, I can't do that. I need a photon also. Right, but um, but the primitive vertex doesn't have two photons. I, I have in my Lego box. I don't have any piece of Lego that has two photon lines coming out of it. So what I actually need is I have, need a fermion line that's going that way, and then it emits a photon going out this way, and. Um, fermion being um, continuing to go this way. Yeah. So this is the Feynman diagram for content scattering. And the, um, here's a sort of in, uh, intuitive, conceptual, quality, qualitative way you can kind of make sense of what the diagram here is. Um, it comes down to the basic representation or understanding of a scattering event. This is especially true in quantum mechanics. When you have a scattering, um, so I think, I guess we are used to thinking of scattering as a single event. But what this diagram is trying to do is try to break it up into two pieces. So imagine it this way. I have a charge here, charges are sitting here that's going to scatter off a photon, scatter a photon. So when a charge is sitting here, the, you know, imagine an electromagnetic wave coming in. As the electromagnetic wave interacts with this, the first thing that's going to happen is this is going to oscillate up and down. So this charged particle first absorbs a photon. And as it's oscillating up and down, it re-emits a, a, a different photon. So that's what this is kind of representing, that this is the absorption, and this is the emission. Yeah. So those are two different now this is where I have to be more circumspect if I'm going to tell you the actual correct effects. That um, let's. How do I uh, put it this way? 
Mm. I think the best way to uh, it rep, uh, present a paradigm <laughs> that you, I want you to think about is essentially, I want you to think of this diagram in three regions. The three regions are what's in this box, what's in this box, and I guess what's in in between. Let me do that in a different color. What's in in between? Yeah? What's uh, in this box, that seems simple enough. I think that's my initial state. Right? And um, in fact, that corresponds to this initial state here. And what's in this box, that's also clear enough. That's the final state. Yeah? So initially, you see a photon coming in, electron coming in. And finally, you see a photon going out and electron going out. And um, what's in between here is the intermediate state or, um, well, let me write down the phrase intermediate. I don't think that's wrong. It's the intermediate state. And we refer to the particles that are in this intermediate state as virtual particles. And when you look at the Feynman diagram in your textbook, that's what this virtual photon refers to. And um, they are, when you actually do the calculation, um, there are rules that you would see. I guess I don't have to throw them all at you all at once, but um, I think this is, you have enough tools to understand this concept. Um, we can, so Kevin's question was, is the photon that's going out different photon from the photon that came in, right? And let's say we are in the center of momentum frame so that the electron and photon, they are in a head-on collision. So they both come in with the same momentum, they collide, photon goes out this way, electron goes out this way. So the photon actually comes in with the same energy and goes out with the same energy. And you are probing with this question, is the photon that went out the same photon that came in? Let me respond with a question. Does the answer to that question matter? Yeah, Phot if they have the same energy, different momentum, but same energy, so their wavelengths are the same. And comes down to these two are indistinguishable particles. Whether um, whether this was absorbed and then a new photon came out, or whether it like it went, underwent elastic scattering. As an observer, you wouldn't know the difference because in both cases, the initial and the final states you look at are the exactly the same. Then, you know, in, in the classical mindset, you might say this then, then, well, I just want to, you know, I, I want to set up measuring devices, really closely look at the process that's taking place to settle once and for all, is the photon going out this or this? Then in quantum mechanical mindset, what I can say is that, well, every measurement, every observation disturbs the quantum mechanical state of the system. If you are trying to set up measuring devices to prove too closely what's going on here, you are going to alter the entire process itself. So, um, so you really, what I want you to um, start, this happened again. I think it might be something wrong with the pen itself. <laughs> it keeps coming off. One second. Or, I don't know, this is the second, we'll see. Um, what you really should be thinking about this, this is a kind of, uh, it's a kind of black box. What uh, the processes that we label as virtual, we call it virtual because we cannot, uh, even in theory, we cannot observe these processes. It's uh, sort of, this is how we organize the calculation and we can check the, um, we can check what we measure with the initial and final state. But what happens in between? This is like asking where is the position, what's the position of the particle in a particle in a well before we measure the position of the particle. The quantum mechanics offers no answer. There's 
well, it didn't have opposition. So with these virtual particles, if you're asking, did they actually exist? Well, uh, we don't know. That's why we call it virtual. Uh, if we try to really find out, does this electron exist? By setting up some measuring system, the measuring system we set up will disturb this entire scattering process so that we wouldn't have the same process. So, um, so I guess let me leave that there. I think we can talk. Um, so uh, we can talk more about it as we get it, get more into uh, uh, get get more into particle physics. Um, but I needed to introduce this uh, Feynman diagram as a tool that we use to illustrate different processes. Um, I guess the one last thing I can probably mention before we go into actually start talking about particles is um, how to get if we have one known process how to get different kinds of process that are related to this one known process. So you have this Compton scattering, right? And I can um, use this to, I can use this to get at least two more processes and maybe a third. Let's at least do two more. Um, so for those of you who have taken chemistry, this is what I want you to think of this as. This is kind of written like a chemical, uh, uh, reaction equation, right? Yes? Yeah? So if this actually were chemical reaction equation, um, what kind of transformation can you do to the equation to get uh, related processes? Um, like any linear combination. A linear combination. Oh, you don't have antiparticles in chemistry. <laughs> you can't move a particle from one side to the other side. Yeah, so that's a bad analogy. OK, let me not do that. So think of this like a mathematical equation, where it turns A, B, C, D. That if it's a mathematical equation, you can get other related equations by moving terms around, right? So we can do the same thing here. We can move the terms around. And I will handle some of the details that you have to pay attention to as you're doing that. So um, let me. Yeah, I think it, it, this is definitely something with a pen. So let me just uh, set this aside and hand uh, do what I need to. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm, uh, I probably, uh, keeps popping off. Um, I'll just set it aside. I'll deal with this pen later. <laughs> um, so, uh, let me draw the, um, let me show you the transformed equations that shows the related processes. So, I can have, well, um, so this is kind of symmetric one photon, one electron coming in, one photon, one electron going out. Let me have the process where, um, Let's see. Do I have only one? Um, okay, there's at least one process. Um, I can. I can have. Um, I can uh, move one of the photons to the other side, and move one of these to the other side. Actually, you're not. Let, uh, sorry. Um, sorry to keep going back and forth, but. Uh, let me hold off on that until we talk about antiparticles, probably on Tuesday. Um, so the, for those of you who are aware of antiparticles, these are the related processes, but I think explaining that is going to take too much of the time. So the related processes here are positron colliding with the electron to produce two photons in what's known as pair production. And I thought you could also have, I guess that's it. Um, I'm sorry, I thought I had one more process I could illustrate. But the other process that I wanted, I can show is the, just the Coulomb repulsion. That, well, if I drew that, that would be actually exactly this, but just turn the 90 degrees around. But I think to talk about peer production, we kind of need 
um, to have talked about antiparticles, so let me just uh, do that later. Um, 